crossing was about as easy as it gets. Our first international objective was to get gas and get groceries. Following that, we will be tackling our first overland route through the Laguna Salada Flats, hopefully to find an oasis. We would soon find out that our international phone plans were not yet activated and we would have to do the entire route without a map. Yeah, uh, we are driving the Chinook in Mexico. Okay, this is our first grocery shop in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can probably identify about 50% of what is actually in this basket. Yeah, so that's gonna be the fun part when we do our cooking segment. <laughs> yeah, um, mystery cooking is gonna be fantastic. Just you wait. Great, it actually had the price on the receipt. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, that was only 57 bucks. <laughs> Which is great. Which is a lot cheaper than for California. Well, it was so cheap, we just needed a couple more. <laughs> What'd you get this time? Uh, this time we just, you know, we just got a classic for comparison. We're ready to go. Got the new Falcons aired down to 15 in the front, 20 PSI in the back, and we are heading inland towards the Baja Oasis. And then the next thing you know, we were in Mexico. It wasn't like a welcome to Mexico sign where you'd like, oh, and you kind of like high five each other. It was like, no, you're just you're just in Mexico and you're like, okay, well now I know nothing. I'm lost. We don't know very, like, we know very little Spanish. And it was like, it, it, I think it hit us like a train. <laughs> it was just after sunset when the very bumpy road finally brought us to this oasis. We paid the camp host more money than we were expecting, and then he took us to our private campsite with its own hot spring and its own palapa, and we fully understood what we were paying for. This is the Guadalupe Hot Springs, and for our first night in Mexico, it felt like absolute paradise. Look at this wonderful creature with fresh guac, chippies, and OJ.
An oasis. An oasis. Oasis deserves. Oasis number two. A Corona. Yes. With fun. And when you're drinking Corona out of the can, it's uh, customary to use squirt lime. And for the people that like more than one lime, you can have like extra squirt. <laughs> you can have all the lime you want. And the lime hangs out on the, on the can. Cheers. Cheers. Fire. Okay, so this morning we are doing our bolt, screw, and fluid check. We have decided to do this almost once a week now just because of the crazy bumpy roads and how much the Chinook is moving around, etc, etc. So to be safe, we do a full check. Right, Matthew? Right, Stacy. The washers that were on it? Yep. Okay, so the bolt is. The bolt check is complete. We would continue our overland route, hugging the eastern side of the mountains that frame the Laguna Salada Flats in hopes to find another oasis and a set of ruins of an old villa. We're gonna have to use some navigational skill to find this, however, as it was not on our map. under my nail I can't even see how it's oh you gotta watch me step I accidentally kicked it ow ow oh. ouch oh
Opting not to drive at night, we made camp to continue our adventure in the morning. At last, our first Baja beer review. Yeah, our first beer review in a new country. This one is recommended by Kevin and Alexa. Shout out to them yeah. for the beers. And it is literally perfect timing to drink this beer. What's it called, Stace? It is called Sundays to Relax. And what day of the week is it? Sunday. And what's the name of our truck? Sunday. It couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> This is from Sandbox Brewing Company. It is a double IPA. And the subtitle for that is DDH with T45 Citra and Mosaic. What is DDH? I feel like or I just T45. looked at the periodic table. Yeah, well, we know <laughs> Citra and Mosaic are hops. Double, double hopped, maybe? Double, double, double. Double IPA? Like two D's, like triple D's, like double D hop with T45. Triple 45 Citra and Mosaic. Yo, have you tried the DDH with the T45 Citra and Mosaic? There's no romance. No! Oh. Well, you could read the government warning. So no, I'm not going to read the government warning. So Let's a say. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to say. We're going to have to drink it and then make one up. Okay. All right, this is the Sundays to Relax double IPA. It is 8.6%. It's been a minute since we've had craft beer. I have sand in mine. I have sand in mine. Now you're just confusing me. <laughs> mine was already full. Okay. It smells citrus yes. smooth. Yes. It doesn't smell citrus tart. Oh, it smells like, it no. literally smells like my favorite beer. Is it weird that it kind of smells like weed? Does it kind of smell yes. like, it kind of smells like, like a, Absolutely. like some kind of kush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, like it kind of smells like weed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a lot of sand on my rim. I thought I could. It. Okay. Oh. Woo! This is a Sunday to relax, everyone. Dang, this thing will make you Holy relax. Heck. Wow. Damn, that is so yummy. <sighs> it is so good. That is so smooth. Does not taste like an IPA. <laughs> Because it is so smooth. It is so smooth. There is no tartness. Eloquently balanced between citrus hops and deeply satisfying notes of clove and mango, Sundays to Relax will put you into a mood of... Elation. Ah, yes, there it is. The day most people are very hungover. Sundays are to relax, though. But what if you want to have a pint with the boys? You don't want anything that tastes like the tequila you had the night before. You don't want that cheap beer that you were drinking all night. You want the happy medium that tastes like the juice of God. Sundays to relax. Wow. Cheers again, my love. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Oh my god, they're actually moving. It's so hard. Hi. Stop here. Doesn't really look like a road anymore. <laughs> yeah, I say we fly oh, the drone. There are tracks there. But... What do you think? Should we fly the drone? Yeah. Let's... Well, we saw 
parts of a river and no tracks and no palm trees. And palm trees are always a giveaway of an oasis, it seems. So we're gonna carry on. We're not gonna waste the whole day on this one, but we're gonna try a little bit harder. We had been seriously affected by the idea of a desert oasis, and now it was not something that we could easily give up on. but it's also kind of like quicksand. It's hard to tell if there's actually any tracks that went through here recently. It kind of looks like there's two right here, but where they go, it's hard to tell. This is the way we have to go though, otherwise we have to go like 60 miles back in the other direction. lost traction in this sand, it's really wet. And I could try another line, but there is nothing to winch off around here. So we're gonna go down even further and see if there's another spot that we can get close to the river. This was an opportunity for me to really listen to my gut. And I was not getting a good feeling about driving anywhere near this river. A heavy rig, nothing to winch off, and only two max tracks is not the formula you want when you're by yourself in the desert without service. So we would carry on to find a more solid and safe route, however still without a map. Let me correct myself. We had a very old screenshot of the route we were trying to take and the topography maps of Google that showed no roads. Between those things and the tracks that were before us, we had to navigate about 60 miles before we would reach our destination. It was at this point that things started to get interesting and we had to forego our plans of finding the oasis and the ruins because the most important part was getting back to civilization with enough fuel. So far, so good. We're new to international overland travel, and our objective is to make intelligent decisions so we can continue this trip through 17 countries. And we were going to have to find some new navigational skills very quickly if we were going to get out of this desert without spending another night here or calling for help. So we went from no tracks to so many tracks we can't figure out what's what. But we will. We will. We will use our keen sense of navigation and orienteering. For now we're just lost in the desert. As it turns out, we had found our way onto an old Baja 1000 route, which was a good sign that we were heading in somewhat of the right direction. Hopefully we didn't have to do another thousand miles. Okay, well all three signs point that way. So, I guess follow the signs.
navigated our first Baja desert and oasis and Stacy found a flower. Heck yeah, the sun is setting. The truck did phenomenally well. Very happy with the performance. Oh look, <laughs> there's the ruins. Heck yeah, friends, that is the road right there. We did it. Good job. Professional or interiors. We were hoping to be a bit more ahead of time so the sun wasn't setting, so we could make it to San Felipe. However, we don't want to drive in the dark. So now we're finding camp. We have to find camp. Thank you guys for being here. We are stoked to finally be in Mexico and finally be starting our Pan American adventure. If you like this video, please show your support by smashing that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. If you're looking for more behind the scenes content, feel free to check us out on Patreon where we post updates and real life behind the scenes stuff. And join us next time as we finally hit the ocean and take the Chinook on its first ever beach drive. Sponsored by KC Highlights. Brighten the world. <laughs> Got the new Falcons aired down to 15 and 20 PSI. We've been watching people get stuck in the river. <laughs> All day. <laughs> they, uh, they should have brought a Subaru Forester. That thing just soaked through there. <laughs> yeah, we watched a Subaru Forester, um, a Subaru cross track. Cross track. We pushed out a guy that was in. A, it's like a Chevy Volt, like a Yaris oh. size thing. Like should not have been out here at all. Just guy, and his wife. He got stuck, and we pushed him out. Yeah, it was it, pff, with two fingers. That thing was so light. But. Yeah, Oh man, little blonde babe, and then there's black mama. Heck yeah, you're cute. Oh, I'm freaking out. Nice. <laughs> okay, we don't need it that long, do we? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Welcome to the circus, where everyone is welcome. La!